get somewhere, but we keep taking some detours a long way around to get there. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but maybe we'll get there this morning. <clears throat> We've been talking about our old carnal mind and how it's enmity with God. We've been talking about how that the mind of Christ is the only way to know the will of God, the mind of the Spirit, because our old carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of God. That's why we need faith. And it takes the mind of Christ to be able to see by faith, to walk by faith. Because on our old carnal mind, we can't understand it. That's why so many people try to understand, you know, well, let's figure out God. You can't figure out God. Amen. In the beginning, He was. Now figure that out. You can't. Amen. Hallelujah. There is we as men we want to see how that this watch that works perfectly like it's supposed to, everything in there works right. We want to be able to say, well, first they started off with this, then they added this, then you can't you can't explain God like that. Amen. God has always been, always will be. The Bible just simply puts it in the beginning, God. Amen. So there's no definition for God no matter how hard you try to figure it out and your carnal mind can't wrap its feeble way of thinking around that most of the time. But we've been talking about the battle that goes on in our mind and we've been talking about how that that's where most of the battle takes place and not only do we need to know this, but the enemy already knows this. I asked you this question last week, I think it was, where does depression begin? It begins in your mind. Where does fear begin? If the devil attacks you with fear, where does he attack you? He attacks you in your mind. Amen? So we know the spirit of fear attacks there. The spirit of depression attacks there. We know that sin really begins in the mind. It begins with a thought. It begins with you uh, not just thinking of something and like Brother Hinton used to say. Brother Hinton used to say you can't keep a bird from landing on your head, but you can keep him from building a nest there. And he used that as an example of you can't keep your old carnal mind many times from thinking on a thought that you shouldn't have thought, but you don't have to continue to think on it and build upon that sinful thought that you had. For example, when David walked out on the rooftop that night and he saw Bathsheba taking a bath, if he looked upon her and his first thought was, wow, well, that's man. That's just man. Amen? That's just the way man, that's, that's our carnal mind. But he didn't stop there. Brother Rodney, he didn't stop looking. He didn't stop thinking. As a matter of fact, this entertaining thought that came along, he began to feed upon it. He began to rehearse. He began to try to plot a way that he could have this woman and get rid of her husband. Amen? So we know the Bible says in James 1 and 14, a scripture that we're real familiar with, that every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Where did this begin? It began in his mind. Then when lust had conceived, where did this conception take place? It takes place in the mind. The fertile soul of your mind. Oh, if we could just understand today how important it is to guard our mind. And that's really what we're going to be talking about this morning. We're going to go back into the armor of God that we talked about last week. But James goes on to say, When lust hath conceived, it bring forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bring forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. And we hammered that Scripture hard for about two months around here. So we ought to know that one right there. That one ought to be one of those that we have hid in our heart today. And we know, amen, that sin will kill you. And it begins in the thought process of man. When the snake, when the serpent came to Eve in the garden, how did he try and get her to reason with her carnal mind? He began to reason with her. He began to try and explain to her, well, that ain't really what's going to happen. You need to think this way. So the battle that goes on in our mind is what we've been talking about lately. And the enemy knows that the battle is there. We are warned over and over in the Word of God. And if you want to turn, you can go to Ephesians 6 and 13. We're going to be there for a few minutes before we move on somewhere else. Ephesians 6 and 13 we hit last week talking about the whole armor of God. Paul would say in Ephesians the 6th chapter, the 13th verse, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Brother Rodney, he says, stand therefore, and he begins to tell us some things. Having your loins girt about with truth. Now we know that the truth is the Word of God. And we'll find in almost every aspect of this armor, really in all the aspects of this armor, it all can be 
directly pointed back to the Word of God. Because without the Word of God, you have no armor today. Have your loins girt about with truth, which is the Word. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Then he says, having your feet shod with the preparation of the Gospel, which is the Word of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. And we know that you cannot have faith today except that it comes by the Word. And preacher, what are you talking about? The Bible says, now then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That's why we have so many people that are faithless this morning, not enough Word in their life. Amen? Because the Word will build your faith. The Word will cause your faith to grow. And without it, your faith will lay dormant. Your faith will not grow. See, every man's given a measure of faith. But to be given a seed is one thing. But to nurture that seed and to allow it to come to fruition and to maturity, oh, that's a whole other thing. Amen? Every one of us has some kind of faith. Everybody puts their faith in something. Tomorrow is Monday. There will be people that will go in and they will punch the time clock and they will work 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week. Why? Because they have faith. They didn't get paid first. But they have faith that they're going to get a check on Friday. If they didn't, they wouldn't go in and punch the time clock. Amen? Because they would think, well, that for, I don't know whether I'm going to get paid or not. I'm just going to stay home. Amen? So they have faith. People put their faith in a lot of things. Some people have built their whole faith, their whole life on that we came from a monkey. To me, that takes great faith. Amen? Hallelujah. It takes more faith for me to believe that than it does for me to believe that in the beginning God. But I'm telling you this one, everybody has faith. But faith must be nurtured. Faith must be fed. Faith must be taken care of. And in order for you to do that, it must all be done through the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word. It says, take on the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And we see how that the shield of faith is based upon the Word of God. Then he says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh, listen to me. Peter would put it this way. To gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. To gird up the loins of your mind. And I made this poor demonstration last week. I'll do it again this week for those of you who are out there watching. I was talking about how to put on the helmet. And we talked about how the helmet was the Word of God. And we talked about how the only way to quench the fiery darts of deceit is that you know the Word for yourself. The only way to keep from being deceived is to know God's Word. To measure everything that you hear. Everything that you see. I'm talking spiritually. Many times in the natural. But to measure every doctrine, every teaching. Measure it against the Word of God. And if it goes against God's Word, it is not of God. And it is, the, it is of the enemy. We're talking this morning about the helmet of salvation. We're talking about the helmet of the Word of God. We're talking about the importance that it, it is to guard our minds. Oh, I hope you get something out of this this morning. Mm -hmm. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart. He's talking about his mind. Amen. That I might not sin against thee. Not only had he heard the word. He's not just talking about hearing the word. He's not just talking about reading the word. He's talking about receiving it into his emotions into his affections, into his mind. You know, many times when someone suffers brain damage, they'll say, well, this, this part of the brain has been affected that controls his emotion, that controls his train of thought, that controls his thought process or his memory. The mind is the... The mind is the, the focal... The, and I, can't, I, I went blank. The mind is the... It is our engine, amen, that drives the body. It is the communication center. It's the hard drive, if you will, as a computer has a hard drive. That's what your mind is to your body today. Without your brain, if you go into someone that, and they're laying there and they're on oxygen, they say, well, their brain dead. Well, guess what? They're dead. Amen? And the brain, the mind, is the most important part of man today. Yet so many times we leave it unguarded. It's as if we walk out on the battlefield with everything covered except for our mind. But in essence, 
Nothing can be covered without the Word of God, which is what covers your mind. The helmet that you put on today is the Word of God that protects your mind, that protects the most important part of your body. Somebody said, well, you know, you can cut a man's water off and he'll live for several days. You can take his food away and he'll live for several days. But if you attack his mind and you take away his hope, he'll commit suicide. Amen. And kill himself immediately. We're talking this morning about the importance of protecting your mind with the Word of God. You see, in the Old Testament, they had cities that had great walls around them, Brother Sleeves. And at these gates, Brother Rodney, they would set a guard. They would set a watchman. And this guard would be to protect the city. If he saw the enemy coming, he would warn the others. Today, at the gate of our mind should be the guard, and that guard is called the Word of God. So that whenever certain things try to get in that gate, if it does not line up, with the Word, then the guard says, no, this ain't right. That's why you have so many people today flocking by the thousands to churches, to preachers who know nothing about the Word of God. Oh, they make you feel good. They can, they can really get you built up and pumped up and get your self-will really going. But they know very little. Most of what the knowledge that preachers have today concerning the Word of God you could fill a thimble with, maybe. But people flock to them because they do not know the Word for themselves. And in these cities, if the guard was not there, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want you to get this. If the guard was not there, the whole city was vulnerable. The guard was actually the first part of the defense. Because he would stand there and he would make sure, do I see anything that looks funny? Do I see anything that looks weird? Do I see anything moving out there? Do I see an enemy approaching? So many times, the very first part of the strategy of the enemy would be to take out the guard. When they would sit down and plan, okay, here's the city. What do we know about it? Well, we know that it's got walls. They're great. We know that it has guards on the walls. So they would begin to plot on how to take out the watchman first without letting those inside the city know. If they could take away the watchman, if they could take away the guard, then it gave them a leg up, if you would, on the people inside because there was no one to warn. No voice to cry out. No way of saying the enemy is approaching. So if we can sneak up and take away the guard, listen, there it is no wonder today that this is the most hated book that's ever been printed. This is the most fought against book that has ever been printed. No book in the history of mankind has been attacked like this book. Why? Because the enemy knows if he can attack Brother Slice, if he can get the guard first, if he can take away the guard at the gate, then he can get in. Much more easier. Amen. Without the guard at the gate, they can climb the walls and get in while the people sleep. Without the guard at the gate, while the people are carrying on with their everyday lives, with no guard to say, Behold, the enemy's coming. I see something suspicious. The enemy's on their way. Without that guard, the whole city is vulnerable. Without this guard today, you are vulnerable. Without this helmet today that I'm talking about, you are vulnerable are vulnerable. Galatians 3 and 1. We talked about this last week. Galatians 3 and 1. And we read this scripture many, many times. A lot of times around this time of year simply because of the wording in it and what Paul was talking about. He said, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? And if you'll study that, you'll find out he's talking about someone has came in and caused them to believe something that's not true. Some, someone has came in and caused them to err in their doctrine. Now why did this happen? How did the Galatians become bewitched? Because they let down their guard. There was no guard at the gate. They did not compare that which man brought in to what thus saith God. And I guarantee you, there would be a lot of churches empty this morning if the church members that are in the pews would just take the Word of God, pick up an old King James Version, amen, I know it's outdated and it's archaic, but it's the Word of God, amen, and you would compare what God says to what your preacher been telling you. You'd find you somewhere else to go church. But there is no guard at the gate 
in most people's minds today. They allow everything and anything. How in the world do we go from being a society, from being a church, I'll leave the world out of this, from being a church that condemned as God does witchcraft, sorcery, divinations, uh, horoscopes, fortune telling, witches. How do we go from condemning that and shunning that and knowing that that's what God has said is of the devil, it is wicked, it is of darkness, we're to have no fellowship with it. How do we go from that to the place today where churches have Halloween festivals and hallelujah parties and trunk or treat and all of the other mess that they've got going on fellowshipping with devils? How do we get there? We get there because somebody didn't have a guard guarding the gate. Oh, my, my, my. Talking about the guard this morning being the Word of God. There's no guard at the gate of the minds of God's people. That's why they swallow everything that the enemy brings in hook, line, and sinker. Paul said, take this helmet on because without the helmet, you are vulnerable. Without the helmet, you can actually not have any of the other parts of the armor. Really what you are is naked on the battlefield in front of the enemy without any defense shield whatsoever. You can't have faith without the Word you, so you don't have no shield. You can't have your, your sword without the Word because the sword is the Word of God. You can't have your helmet today without the Word because that is what protects and guards your mind. And with no guard at the gate, that is why, listen to me, my goodness, that is why we hammer so much on the importance of the Word of God. Because without it, you are left without a defense. Having your loins girt about with truth, with the Word of God, make sure that at the gate of the city, you can find this over and over in the Old Testament. Go home and look it up. Make sure that there are watchmen. And there was a cry that would be heard. It was often heard. It was no strange thing, Brothers Lee's, to hear someone ask the watchman that was on the wall or there at the gate. They would say, Watchman, and the Bible records this, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? What they were asking was, Watchman, is it well? Is it okay? Is everything all right? Do you see anything suspicious? Oh, my goodness. But if the church today said, Hey, what about it? No guard. No answer. And if they didn't get an answer from the watchman, they knew something was wrong. If they asked the watchman, hey, what about it? Is everything okay? Is everything well tonight? Hey, watchman, you up there? Go tell somebody the watchman's gone. That's what somebody needs to do. Somebody needs to run and tell the church the watchman's gone. The gate has been left unguarded and the enemy is made, has made his way in inside the city walls and the church didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he went to sleep at the wheel. Amen. Why? Because the guard is not at the gate. Talking about the Word of God. We are so quick. Why do you think all those thousands of people were so disappointed whenever that crazy guy from wherever, I don't know if he's in California or Florida, wherever he's at, said that the end of the world of the rapture was going to take place on this day, and when it didn't happen, a lot of them really were let down and confused and don't understand it. Well, if you had, a, if you had, have had the guard at the gate, you wouldn't have followed the crazy guy anyway because you know that the Bible says that no man knows the hour, no man knows the day when the Lord will come. Amen. But people are so spiritually, so biblically illiterate that they don't know the Word of God for themselves. And I don't mean that to down you or to put you down. I certainly don't stand here today and tell you that I know everything that's in the Word of God. I don't believe anybody knows everything that's in the Word of God. I don't care how big you think you are. I don't believe you have all the knowledge that God has or all the knowledge that's in His Word. But I'm telling you today, it is important. No, it's more than important. It is necessary for you to have the Word of God to guard your mind, to take up this helmet and to put it on. Because if He can get in your mind, Brother Rodney, He can get you. Many, many people's problems start with an attack on the mind. Start with depression. Start with fear. Fear literally has killed untold numbers of people simply because the enemy got in their mind. He got inside the gate because there was no guard. 
There was no watchman. There was no biblical knowledge. You didn't, there was not enough knowledge of the Word of God to realize, hey, this is not of God. And the church of today, like the church there in Galatia, has become bewitched. Why? Because of the lack of Word. No one minding the store. No one guarding the gates. No watchman on the walls. Thus, everything and anything has been allowed inside the doors. And I know this goes on every month out of the year. And there's no way to pinpoint this and say, well, you know, it's all in the fact that they celebrate Halloween. No, it goes much, much deeper than that. We're talking about Christians that read their horoscope every day. We're talking about children. We're talking about Christians that allow their children to watch anything and everything that is in the movie theaters and on television screens and to listen to every kind of music that comes down the pipe. Listen, I know that I'm old-fashioned. I know that you may think that I'm too heavenly-minded or too religious, but any music that does not glorify Jesus, your child doesn't need to be listened to and neither do you. Amen? Hallelujah. All of that tear in my beard, my wife's gone and my dog got shot and my truck broke down. All of that right there is to get inside your mind and depress you and bring you down. Amen. And all of that has one, one person behind it, one, one individual behind it, and that is the devil. And in the music, you know, that is so rock pounding. Christians, oh, I just went to a big rock concert. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I wouldn't go around telling that if I was you. Because it allows people to know something ain't right. At least people that know the Word of God. Because these things ought not be. In the midst of rock concerts with music pounding and, and lyrics that you can't even understand. And if you can't understand them, they're, they're, they're filthy. Oh, but preacher, you're a fanatic. That's just, just a new thing. We, we, we become so stupid that not only do we go to, to worldly rock concerts, but we have bands in our churches and call them Christian rock. All oh, because somebody forgot to watch the gate and the enemy came in and now we've got it all going on. I mean, we've got, we've got beer night at churches. Church nights that they call on tap night. Some of them, I heard a preacher preaching this week about a church that said, bring your own booze, amen, to our thing we're having. And we've got churches that move out their altar and set up their big screen TV and pass out hot dogs and popcorn and soda pop on the pew so they can watch the Super Bowl. Oh, how far have we fallen? Used to. You wouldn't even come in the house of God with a piece of gum in your mouth. Now you can sit on the front row and eat a bag of chips. Don't nobody think nothing about it. Why? Because somebody let the guard down. Somebody quit minding the store. Somebody decided, well, you know, it ain't that important to watch the gate. I'll just go in here and have some fun. I'll come back later, and later it was too late. Came back later to watch, and oh no, the city has been infiltrated by the enemy. And maybe, maybe these things are more evident during this time of year than they are any other, but... They're always there. And it has been for a long time. The church is not right. The church has not been right for a long time. I'd love for you to come in here this morning and for me to put on my fake Hollywood smile and tell you that everything's all right. Every day can be a Friday. This is your best life now. Everything's going great for you. Everything will continue to go great for you. Just continue to think great and positive. Drop your money in the offer and I'll see you next week. I'd love to be able to do that, but it ain't the truth. The church has never been more messed up than she is right now. Oh, I don't believe that, Brother Billy. Well, you, you get a hold of me. Let me know how many of your churches out there don't celebrate Halloween in some form or fashion. Let me know how many of your churches out there actually put more emphasis on the Word of God than they do their tongue-talking class in the back room or than they do their dance class or than they do their drama team. The most important thing about a church should be the Word of God. The most important thing in your life should not be the TV guide. The most important thing in your life should not be your romance novels. The most important thing should not be your sports channels. The most important thing should be the Word of God because that is your guard. 
That is the helmet that you put on in this battlefield that we are on. I'm telling you, the battle takes place in the mind. And the, de the enemy, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, will attack your mind. And unless you have on this helmet the Word of God that I'm talking about, you will not be able to quench his fiery darts. You will not be able to withstand it. That's why we have people who are supposed to be Christians take a handful of pills and end their life because they forgot to guard the gate. There was no guard at the gate. And when that happens... The whole city is left vulnerable. Isaiah 21 and 11 record those words. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? Do you see any danger? Do you see the enemy? Anything the enemy might be using to get close to the city? And the watchman would answer. He would say, everything's okay. Or he would say, wait a minute. Something's not right. That's what will happen in your life if you know the Word of God for yourself. And you go into a church... And there's things going on that are contrary to the Word of God. You know what happens? The watchman says, hey, something ain't right. I see something. The enemy's trying to move in. He will warn you. He will let you know. He will protect your mind. I'm talking about the guard at the gate. The Word of God. That's why David said, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The watchman would answer, is all, all is well? Or he would warn them of something that was wrong. There would be no warning. You will receive no warning unless you know the Word of God. Even had a preacher rebuke me on this some time ago. Simply because I said everything, every doctrine, every teaching should be proven by the Word of God. There would have been a time when you wouldn't have been able to find a Christian that would disagree with that, Brother Lee. So a church goer, someone that supposedly knows the Lord, if you said that about the Word of God, they'd be right there with you. Oh, but not anymore. Why? Because we've had our feel good, our positive thinking preachers rub us down till we so greasy we can't sit in the pew without sliding out. Amen. You talking about greasy grace, buddy? Yeah. Amen. You talk about this thing being slippery. It's slippery, all right. You're going to slide right on out of the pew and down into hell unless you get a hold of the guard and set it at the gate. And say, so you watch. And see, just as they said, watchman, what of the night? And you say, Lord, is this really of you? And they say, oh, it's not. You said that we would not know the hour, we would not know the day, so I know that this guy's out in left field. Amen. You, you sit here to love my enemy? But these people over here saying you need to kill every infidel you can get your hands on. But you said to love them. And they must be wrong. Because anything that goes against God's Word... Are you getting this, Brother Tyler? I hope you get this. Anything that goes against God's Word is not of God. I don't care who's teaching it. I don't care if it comes from the mouth of Billy Graham. I don't care if it comes from the mouth of Jimmy Swagger. I don't care if it comes from the mouth of the Pope. I don't care if it comes from your beloved Joel Osteen. Amen. I don't care if it comes from, I don't care who it comes from, the president or any king in the world. If it goes against God's word, it is not of God. Amen. Amen. It is not of God. That's why we need the watchman. I don't think I'm making it very clear today, but oh, I can see it. I can see it. How important this helmet is. How important it is to set the guard at the gate. To watch for the enemy. Because the Bible says we are not supposed to be ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. Concerning the devices of the devil. The only way not to be ignorant is to know His Word. The only way not to be deceived is to know His Word. Brother Billy, I can't read. Write us. We'll send you some sermons that has a whole lot of Word on them. Amen? Get a, you can get a hold of some, some uh, audio cassettes, something. Get the Word of God inside of you. In your mind. Let it be your guard. Let it be the watchman at the gate of this city so that it will keep the enemy out of your mind. You don't have to look any farther for the problem with the church, the problem with America, the problem with the world than this right here. We let down our guard. We've let down our guard. <clears throat> so we have Christians going to Harry Potter movies. One woman down in Tennessee using Harry Potter to teach her Sunday school class. 
she'd be looking for another church to teach in. Because Harry Potter is not of God. And it does not take a biblical scholar to figure that one out. <clears throat> Amen? All of those things are an abomination to God. It don't matter. Listen, you can take a pig and you can, put a, you can wash him down with lye soap and you can put ribbons on his ears. Put a dress on him. He's still a pig. And if you let him go, he'll go right back to the mar and the stink that you took him out of. Amen? 